in essence, it's freedom. Instead of basic in universal basic income through authority and through coercion, it's universal basic income through the people cooperating and competing each other freely. Welcome to the Vegan Anarchist Show. In this video, I'm going to discuss disability, mutualism, and universal basic income. Enjoy and please like and subscribe. This is the Vegan Anarchist. And in this is the Vegan Anarchist. And in this video is about why mutualists and market anarchists should embrace UBI, Universal Basic Income. I, um, a long time ago, a few weeks ago, I haven't made a chance to make a video, but I've said, they asked the question, well, how is mutualism gonna, how is disabled people gonna do well in mutualism or mutualism doesn't have, you know, stocks, it doesn't have rent, it doesn't have profit, it doesn't have a lot of the other stuff that can not be distract value for people labor. How are disabled people going to survive, you know, under mutualism? And my answer is simple. Mutualist basic income. Mutualist basic income. What is mutual's basic income? Or oh, it's a it's a form of universal basic income. It is voluntary, not status, and is and more importantly, well yes, not status, voluntary, and allows the poor, the disabled, the caretakers, various other kinds of people to be able to make it a mutual society even if they kind of don't want to work as much as work it much, you know. So let's do this. And the reason is I am a, as someone who's on the autism spectrum who has ADHD, who also has a major depressive disorder, like gender dysphoria, and all this other fuckery I have. This hits me home. I'm all, and... How is it gonna work is, is gonna be simple. We're gonna have me competing in mutualism. We have what's called mutual banks, which lower at zero percent. Use your percent interest to all this, to all the people in the bank. So, but since if you get with what Benjamin Tucker calls the money monopoly, that would only free up capital, but that would also free up currency creation. So it allows, and I, my proposal is when we get rid of the money monopoly, and then we start. Organizing into a world, mutual, mutual money cooperatives, where we create our own currencies through participatory democracy. What's it going to look like? What's it going to be? And also, like how much it, and how much and who, how much each person you're paying. And because we have free currency being surrounded, currency being like free being. It will be created by anyone without the money monopoly. Communities, organizations of various different types can have members in there that can print too much, so much money and then distribute it amongst themselves and members of the wider community. And then, and then that will be a form of basic income and essentially pay people to use that currency. And not only that, but it also saw it does it without well, taxation, without well, rent, all voluntary, all not exploitative. And with participatory democratic currency creation, we could 
the members and uh, the people in this song and so on, what's it going to be paid? How much are you going to be paid? And all that happens in each of the societies, wages will be up because people get the full, you know, the full value of it, or at least approximately. While also, the cost of living will be down because there will be the taxes on every single thing and every step of the protection to raise the cost of a given item. So in essence, things will be costless, wages will be more, and of course you have the universal basic income or uh, MBI, mutual basic income, to it that allows people to not have to work as much and still be able to afford the basic. It doesn't even have to be as much as our current society because again, things will be so much cheaper. I mean, we're going to get cheaper, I mean, like, you know, like garbage piles and lots of stuff, and like, like high quality, but like inexpensive cheap, not like low quality cheap Chinese made, pro made products. And it's good for the disability, the elderly, people who take care of children, and religious people who devote their lives to religion and have to beg could also receive some benefit. And it's important because I myself, me myself, I myself, don't currently have a job except YouTube, and that doesn't even pay me at all. So for like a few bucks on Patreon, I'm not, not, and, and I'm able to survive because I get disability and I get all sorts of services. And without time, in an anarchy society, we're going to do it all voluntarily. Anything the state can do, the people could do more ethically and better. And it also has economic benefits because if everyone has money to spend, there won't be the same risk as economic uh, booms and bust cycles because there will be, because in capitalism, the wages, some wages are so will be barely high enough to even purchase products. In mutualism, that wouldn't be a problem. And also, mutualism also, by the way, also gets rid of credit, well, interest and investments, which also helps stabilize the market. Um, would, so would, it wouldn't help boom bust like a mutualism, it would just make sure that people have money to spend, stabilizes the market, reduces poverty because, you know, free money, you know, or mutually created money for everybody, where all people to purchase their needs. Uh, Without having to join the ANCOM society. Mental disability. And as far as how it's going to help, it increases trust, like the Finnish experiment. It increases trust, it decreases anxiety, it, it increases. It increases. What's it? It increases. Mental health. I lost a train of thought, but it increases people happiness, you know, and that's an important factor, if people are not happy under anarchism, then like people will result back to statism or maybe move to anarchism, anarcho-communism, which is nothing wrong with it, personally, I just prefer mutualism, their basic income. It also allows people to focus on arts and music and innovate more because they don't have they don't have to work as much and artists and creators, even without intellectual property, would still be able to have an income because of mutual mutual basic income. And it also just incentivize hoarding because if everyone has some kind of stable source of income, it wouldn't be necessary to hoard. And the app and of course people and of course they can also play on labor vouchers, you see. And the labor vouchers is the argument used for labor vouchers, and I'm not against labor vouchers, by the way, is that it doesn't incentivize war because 
a, a accumulation. But all you have to do is for a currency is have a slow deflation, not deflation, inflation. If you have a slow inflation, that would discourage hoarding because if you use it now, the, the money would be good, but if you use it like a, uh, a year later, it would depreciate a little bit of value, so it encourages people to use the money. It discourages hoarding, so it just, just have to add a little inflation to the different currencies. Involved with job satisfaction. And then overall, mutualism is about reciprocity, you see. Reciprocal, reciprocal relationships. But if someone doesn't have anything to be reciprocal except their labor, they're going to be exploited, which goes against the exploitation part of mutualism. But if they have money and something or something to it, to mutually get mutual to be reciprocal with without having to sell their labor they can be a much more reciprocal voluntary society based on reciprocity which is more or less the golden rule and me personally I think it's a I think it's it's some for people who who don't hate poor people but still love free markets and still want to have what the innovations will still have what markets can provide in terms of prosperity but also make sure there's no poor people in there by eliminating exploitation by having a mutualist basic income by art by people generating currency and now people ask well people shouldn't just make money or we'll, we'll make sure that it has value and the truth is, money is, doesn't have an intrinsic value these days. Even gold, for example, its value comes from people's belief it does, or it comes from the so it comes from the social realm, where people use it and believe in it does and want to exchange with it. Same thing, except except the one government, the government decides which currency, who can print what currency, and has the monopoly on currency. We can instead have a plurality of competing currencies to be not only for people adopting it, but people using it, people spending it, people accepting it. And one way for people to, one way to incentivize people to use a currency is to give it to them. And then people, and there will also be competing currency groups, there will also be competing like the Tell Society, the Joint Society. Disabled groups, all sorts of stuff, individuals, is basically to incentivize people to use that currency because they have money to spend. Less and plus, if you plus they have the full value of the labor, the society to be well off, expect for like as much people as possible. So you see, mutualism doesn't have to be bad for disabled people. It doesn't have to be bad for artists or creative types. It doesn't have to be bad for people taking care of children. It doesn't have to be bad for people who are easily stressed out. In fact, in fact, not and also it doesn't need stuff to include more because I'd be pro that group for plurality of economic systems. So like mutual aid, gift economies, so decentralized plan, markets, you can have barter, you can have currency, you can have labor vouchers. It depends, as long as no one's exploiting it's all voluntary, we should have we should be able to use it. So in essence, it's freedom. Instead of basic in universal basic income through authority and through coercion, it's universal basic income through the people cooperating and competing with each other freely. And in essence, it will increase trust and nature of nature's a society functions well for people to even be reciprocal to each other. And it's in a way we don't need government social welfare programs because we can do it ourselves and that that's beautiful 
And in essence, the future is ours. We can take care of each other. We can make sure we all disable or ourselves can live a good life. Without the government, without corporations, without capitalism, without ableism, especially ableism and capitalism. And there is other stuff. This is the vegan anarchist, and in conclusion, universal basic income doesn't have to involve coercion, it can involve voluntary, voluntary transactions and competition and cooperation. And it could be beneficial for all. And we should ought to adopt that as mutual and a market anarchist, although me personally I don't get by market anarchist. Unless unless it's so sober because it makes it easier because I feel like more, uh, quick market anarchists will make it too restrictive and think there's all about markets when it's not. And in essence, freedom! Freedom! freedom. This is the vegan anarchist. No meat, no milk, no mouses. See ya! Life, liberty, and a, and a means of production for all, baby. See ya. I'd like to thank all of y'all for watching my videos. And remember to like, comment, subscribe. And please comment as well as if you, any of you are already subscribed or even if you haven't, subscribe and press the bell button so you can get more notifications for my video ring. And I'm grateful for having an audience. And thank you all my supporters and followers and haters and stuff like that. And to y'all, hope you have a good day and make sure the working class rise up and claim our liberation. See y'all.